It's a real treat to welcome you, Margaret, to the University of Notre Dame and to our Snipe Museum of Art. We're welcoming you in the midst of the inaugural Matthews Lecture uh, in Byzantine Studies, uh, enabled by the generous donation of the Matthews brothers who've established in the Medieval Institute at Notre Dame, the Reverend Constantine Matthews Endowment for Excellence in Byzantine Christianity. Welcoming you here, we thought, why not ask you a little bit about Byzantine studies uh, and about where it's gone, where it's going, and, and maybe our own modest place at Notre Dame in uh, the world of Byzantine studies. So perhaps to start, what brought you to Byzantine studies initially uh, all those decades ago? Well, I came from the medieval West, which uh, I think resonates here. And I became interested in the Crusades and I found a second year option um, to do. And I did a, th a final year option on East and West art in the 12th century. And along the way, I came across my teacher, Anthony Breyer, who was uh, a very large figure, um, a wonderful inspiration, very charismatic. And I suddenly discovered that I was no longer a Western medievalist, but I was really a Byzantinist. So I went to Greece, I came back and started a PhD, and I've been a Byzantinist ever since. Wonderful. So over these decades, how have you seen the field develop, take form? What directions has it taken and, and what's excited you in particular? Well, I have been very interested in particular um, on the borderlines of history and literature um, and particularly in the development of literature. And it's taken quite a long time, but I think we've now got to a point where we believe that there is a Byzantine literature and that it should be studied. And there are a lot of young, really very good young people now doing it. So I, I have been delighted looking back at the way in which that's changed, that in particular, but there've been all sorts of other success stories too, you, and you know very well. Uh, so I think Byzantine philosophy has had a a big rise in recent years. I think liturgy, mm. uh, the students of Robert Taft are now making really big waves and really communicating with the rest of the subject. I think what I would say is there's much more communication uh, across the subject. Um, no more silos. You know, the law people really do talk to the historians and the liturgists really do talk to the literary people and the art historians. And that's what we need. We need all the disciplines to be rowing together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and you've been such a pioneer in helping to make that happen, especially with your work uh, in recent years on this continent at, at, at Dumbarton Oaks. Um, tell us, is the outlook bright? And, and uh, what, was, what should we be expecting? in the future of Byzantine studies? Uh, is it bright? Um, yes, I think. I think it depends very much where you are. I think there are old traditions that are really struggling. Um, I think possibly in Germany, um, the division between Byzantinistic and uh, Christian archaeology is problematic now. Uh, but I think Byzantine studies have learnt to look outwards. Uh, we do look at the West, we do look at the East, we are very concerned with the whole of the Mediterranean. We want to know what's going on in these other areas and we want to bring the best of what we find into our own work as well. And the other thing I'd say is it's a very young subject. If you go to the international congresses, I'm always just amazed at how many young people there are. I think my colleagues, uh, back in Belfast, thought that it might be a dying subject, but it is absolutely nothing of the kind. We feel that energy here too. And um, what's been your experience these, uh, on, on this trip to, to Notre Dame? And, and 
what's your hope for our, our own contribution to the field? Well, it's, a, it's just a wonderful place to come to. And the donation is such very good news. What a wonderful thing to do for your father. Uh, and I've been just so happy. I've been sitting in a library again after all this time, of course, where we haven't been able to. But what a library. Uh, the arrival of the Anastos collection here was just such an amazing opportunity. And Notre Dame has really seized that opportunity. Uh, it's really good to see. I've always thought it was the place where one need never be ashamed to be a medievalist. Uh, but I think I also see that Byzantine studies is now just very, very much part of the way that the Institute interprets the Middle Ages now. Thank you, Margaret. And when you think of uh, Byzantine studies, many people assume Greek and Greek only. Now, one of the things we've, we've done is, is hire recently, for instance, in Syriac studies. And, and what's your feeling about that kind of outwardness? Um, well, I spent a lot of time in Dumbart Noakes talking about big tent Byzantium, and that's, that's what it is. And I was so pleased to see uh, Syriac summer school joining the, the Greek summer school and the, uh, the Coins and Seals summer school at Dumbart Noakes, uh, and working closely with the, the colleagues I had there particularly Scott Johnson and Jack Tanus. I, I could never not think that Syriac was a, a vital part of everything that we do. But I think this is very much part of the future. Um, Greek is important, very important, but there are other Byzantine languages as well. And we need to bring them into play and talk to them. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you again so much for gracing us with your presence for uh, the lecture itself and beyond. Uh, I know the students are all uh, delighted to have you around and I've only heard rave reviews about both your lecture and your interaction with them. So again, thank you and please come back again, come back often and uh, enjoy uh, all that we have to offer. Thank you so much. I've, I'm having such a wonderful time and your students are wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Margaret. <laughs>